Good day. It's the Daily Drawing Club live. Good morning, everybody. We're going to do a drawing challenge today. And today I'm going to talk about um, drawing through grief. So I've had a rough couple of days, rough, couple, rough week or so. So we'll talk about um, that while we're drawing today. So hopefully I can you know, keep it together a little bit, but um, talk about that. So today's drawing prompt is heavy metal. And that is on in honor of my big sister who just passed away um, over the weekend. I'm gonna talk about that um, as we <laughs> dive into this topic. So a little, little heavy, heavy topic today, I guess, but I think, um, the act of drawing through grief is something that, um, we talk to a lot of artists about in the draw or die club, uh, people that told us they stopped drawing because somebody passed away in their life, whether it's their friend or their dad or something like that, they just didn't feel like drawing anymore, just being creative. I definitely felt that this week. Um, and I just powered through it. I actually kind of feel like it was really good for me to do that. Um, instead of just sitting and dwelling on complete negativity. So for you heavy metal, whatever that means to you, the reason that that's the prompt for me and I'm going to talk through it is that, um, when I think of my sister, I think of, she was really into like, um, heavy metal music since the eighties and, um, yeah. So, so this one's, uh, this one's for Cassie today. We'll talk a little bit about that. Also, you know, I just want to kind of talk through, maybe you'll get to know a little bit more um, about me. I have some notes here somewhere. I just wrote some, some things I wanted to say today. Um, but it is what we say. It's, it's the, um, it's the, uh, you know, on good days, on good days and bad days you draw every day. So I can't just say it to you and not do it myself when I'm going through it and, you know, kind of putting myself out there. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to be public, you know, public or putting your face out there, but maybe it'll help you um, better express yourself to people around you. And, um, okay. So I'm going to talk about that as I draw, I'm going to set my timer here. Um, gonna do what I normally do. I'm gonna shrink this guy down. Before I do that, I'll take a screen. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this just a bit. And for me, I'm just gonna figure out a pose real quick. We'll talk a little bit about the drawing that I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna make a heavy metal thing drawn out like a heavy metal pose here. So, um, gotta have a guitar. I'm probably going to think of that first. Little line. I like an action-y, oh, an action shot somehow. Like I gotta work on some gesture drawing here. So, I kind of devil looking horn there. You'll see, I always do this uh, drawing small thing. And, uh, just to kind of get like some kind of composition to keep things simple when I get into the art of it. flowing like hair, big hair, you know, like big hair kind of action going on. It's not like when I say like heavy metal, my first thoughts go to the eighties, like the big hair metal thing that came out. And then like, suddenly there was Metallica, right? 
and my sister Guns N' Roses. My sister Cassie was always like into that stuff. And um, yeah, so I come from a pretty dysfunctional family. So to say that we weren't really we were we weren't close, but we were always distant and for a lot of reasons and um, but we I'd say all of my siblings I come from a very dysfunctional family in the nicest way possible everybody's so nice um, you know in their own way but we're very just the way we were raised was very shut like keep it to yourself kind of thing and nobody wants to like talk about that it's kind of almost shameful when you don't want to talk about being from like a divorced family or a broken up home or something like that and it's um, you know just was what it was so I didn't get to spend a lot of time with my sisters um, there's probably only a good quality years and then as adults we would see each other you know and passing at the grocery store or something locally but uh, Cassie always came to my comic shows you know like she would just appear and I'm like oh it's Cassie and she loved comic books and stuff too so like I think she was just kind of doing both and she thought it was cool like she thought I was a cool you know little brother and, um, I have some memories of I'm gonna stick with the pose and just blow that up as far. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do like an eddy um yeah so she was always very uh, she thought it was cool that I became an artist and I just she told me that multiple times like she's like man he was so good to see me doing good out there and so that was very nice um oh uh, definitely my sister was in the slayer too I just remember my earliest, probably my earliest memories, like going to visit them when I was like 11 or 10, maybe 10. Um, it was just when like Guns N' Roses was coming out. And she was like in love with Axl Rose and stuff and like that whole. Thing. But she had like Pantera, Slayer. There's some other ones too that'll come to mind. Iron Maiden for sure. So, um, so you see here, I'm just going to focus on whenever I draw like pinups or something like this, I usually try to like draw the hands, you know, a separate, separate from the body for a minute. I'll just kind of, I don't, I don't want to worry about like all the, fingers and stuff. I just want to get the gesture of the hand. And I know this hand will be like up on the kind of like forming a cord of some kind. There on the guitar. I'm just going to draw that all the way through. Yeah, so, you know, it's weird. It's weird to draw through grief. Like, I'm grieving it a little bit, but we weren't close, so it's also very weird to talk about. Like, it's, we weren't really that close. My family's not that close. But I also feel sad about it. Like, I wish hearing that she was struggling with, you know, cancer and not telling anybody, just don't under, you know, I understand it, but I also kind of don't understand that part. My, my older brother um, struggled with some cancer that he got from the call four syndrome, you know, and uh, he didn't, uh, same thing. Like he just didn't want to tell anybody. Like he just was like, I don't want anybody to worry about me. So I'm just gonna go through it, you know? And that's, that's awful, but it's a choice that they made. And I understand, cause like, I feel we're just, we, we get, we're cut from the same cloth. You know, we're stubborn. Probably got it from my mom mostly. Uh, just very stubborn. You know, solitary. Like we're gonna just do our own thing. And I feel like that was 
run differently through the through my family. So I didn't really want to. I'm not. I'm kind of just talking through this as I'm drawing because I want to. Um, I don't want to go other people that the artists specifically that you know it's okay to draw when you're feeling like shit and um <laughs> and uh, you're having feelings because like you can sit with your um you can sit with your thoughts I don't really like that guitar. Let's just do this. Um, that you can sit with your thoughts and you don't talk out loud like I'm doing, right? But as you're drawing, you're thinking about someone or some situation in your life that you went through or what's going to come, you know, what's, what's to come, you know? Um, I think it's, I think it's healthy to do that because if you keep it bottled up inside, it's not great. It's not a great thing. Uh, my dog wants to come back in this room now. Growling. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it always wipes me out when the animals come and go. Wipe out. I was saying. Here comes the cat. All right. Good. Everybody in here now. Sweet. Live streaming. What are you gonna do? Um. But uh. But sitting with your feelings and just dwelling and drinking or you know, hey, listen, I, I had a couple the other night, <laughs> but um. People just fall into that. You know, they fall into that. Drugs, drinking. I think my other sister, you know, she passed away from bad liver. All Again, all distant. So, I mean, it's weird for me to talk about it. Like, I don't want people to think I don't care or anything like that. But it's like, I didn't really know her that well. And honestly, I didn't really, you know, get along with her too much. Like, we had different people. But after my mom passed away, she... I was shocked to learn like that's how my family is i don't really learn about they usually don't contact me unless someone's dying which is sad but it's just as how it is even so my sister cassie here um, i'm talking about today she, last december she reached out to me and said well december 22nd december of 2022 she uh, reached out and said hey listen kelly's dying kelly passed away and uh I'm like, what? Like, no one told me she was sick. No one told me anything. Yeah, she had a bad liver. And I'm like, what in the world? And she's like, yeah, after mom died, she hit the bottle. And, you know, that was, she did secretly was drinking the rector. I was just shocked by that. Like, I was like, I can't believe it. That sounds, I just couldn't see her doing that. But I always take these things as sort of like lessons, too, of what you know what not to do especially for artists because we got like an imagination that's pretty wicked sometimes and um you know that uh we gotta keep that in check you know but for me and I'm, this is probably like a sneak peek of the maybe the newsletter this week but um i uh I didn't, I was uploading that video for Ed the minute that I got that phone call about my sister. And I was just like, are you kidding me right now? Like, what in the world is happening? What in the world? And, um, yeah. So, Again, I think the message today is I'm just talking a little bit about my own life, but and, uh, I don't ever want anyone to feel sorry for me because like I said, I was, I was pretty distant, but it's still family, you know, 
um, it's still a family and uh, it's not easy to talk about but I want to encourage all our friends to um, make sure you don't just bottle that up uh, it's real easy to do it I've man, you know, I've, I've really been dwelling on or re reflecting it's a better word reflecting on all of the conversations that we've had through the Draw or Die Club with other artists this past two years and so many situations where someone's lost someone or, or someone's struggling with some like you know, cancer or something like that. By the way, this is Eddie from Iron Maiden here. Okay, just draw him out old friend there. Um, I'll do most of that in the ink. I think I'm going to ink this one. Um, but so many stories about people that are going through stuff and they're like, yeah, I just I haven't drawn for years. You know, a couple people told me they had drawn for years. The one young lady, she told me she felt like walking in front of a bus. I was like, man, don't do that. Come on. And she's like, yeah, what do I, what's, what is life? Like her indifference because of her dad used to take her to the, uh, the fair and she would draw these animals and stuff. And like you can still do that you could do that in honor of but she was like nah it's just not the same like she totally resigned herself to um not drawing and um i never feel that way i always feel like drawing um but i can see the point you know i can, I can see how somebody would fall in to, to not you know we all grieve differently but for me as an artist, and I'm not saying it's the same for you, would be that I think, um, I'm gonna give him a chain. Why am I gonna draw a chain right now? Come on. Why? But it's gonna be like, he's chained to his. I'll do that. I'll just, I'll just put that in as far as like I can ink that. Oops. Matter of fact, we're just gonna make it. We'll ink that in there. Also, kind of doing a full body shot is kind of ridiculous, TJ. What am I doing? You can. Got 14 minutes left in my timer. I might go longer. Who knows? I want this to look cool. So yeah, I didn't have much back and forth with my sister. Um, very, you know, maybe a little bit in my teenage years, preteen years, before we moved away, there was an effort to try to get the family back to, you know, oh, let's visit and stuff like that, and it just never really. But when I was a young adult, we got together and drank for, you know, probably a year of my life was like, I would sneak into this, not really sneak into this bar. I was underage, but they would just let me in there because I was Cassie's um, brother and I would shoot pool and um, make some money shooting pool. I was 18 <laughs> and she worked there as a, as a cook, the R&R &R in Mount Pleasant. It's not there anymore. It's collapsed or it's destroyed. But um, there was a brief moment in time where people knew me as like, oh, that's Cassie's brother. You know, like, oh, yeah, I'll just, just leave him, you know, let him do his thing. But, so I would sit there and drink at the bar underage. Shh. Don't do that, kids. Don't do that. Um, but, uh, so yeah, there was this brief moment in time where the adult children of a dysfunctional family were trying to become, you know, hang out more and just didn't last, you know, 
where we all have different lives and different come from we, we come from the same place but we have different things different lives you know um and that's just life so um and you know i don't i used to feel ashamed of it a little bit like when people would be like how many brothers and sisters do you have and i'd be like well i've got five brothers and five sisters but they're all like half brother half sister kind of situations i don't really have any like full um, brothers or sisters but i always considered my uh, my half brothers and sisters my my brothers and sisters right like but i don't know you know i'm not going to get into the it's sounding like I'm dissing anybody or anything like that. We all can do a better job of being better to each other, I think. But, um, yeah, I, the older I get, the thing, the, the point that I was trying to make was, I would see these families, like these nuclear families, that were very um, um, put together. Oh, we go to grandma's and grandpa's house and all this stuff. And I, and I had a couple of those families within my family circle and um, cousins and things. And it always seemed like they had their shit together. And then the older I get, their families collapse and fall apart. And it's shocking to everybody. And I'm just like, oh, man, that sucks. Like, oh, it's all the same. It's like all the same to me. Like, there is no perfect, um, you know, perfect family kind of situation so um uh yeah there is no perfect I'm gonna set my do not disturb on here so yeah and it's weird to talk about that but you know what the more i talk about um the dysfunctionality or coming from that in the nicest way possible again like i'm not saying like I don't feel like I had an abusive childhood or anything like that, even though I was just told, and I'm told multiple times that like, oh, I had an abusive uh, childhood. I don't feel like that. And I don't feel like I ever wanted for for much. Like I always had food on my plate and, you know, um, nobody ever really treated me terribly. I don't think, you know, my mom wasn't a nice person, but I didn't grow up with her, so. Um, I feel, if anything, I feel bad for my um, my sisters because the more I hear, I just heard some stories um, the other day that I just couldn't believe. I was like, wow, I just, I didn't even know that they didn't have a good relationship. I, I thought they did and um, they didn't. It's a very abusive relationship that they grew up in. And, you know, that's a bummer. That's a bummer to hear that, so just kind of trying to um, it's just I always look at death um, the same way I was telling my wife that I just look at someone's life and I go there's a beginning you know a middle and an end and I hate it whenever I see bad ending you know like it just sucks like cancer taken real fast you know the older I get the more that's going to happen I know the more people in my life are going to kind of fade away and it sucks like so um, I don't know what my point was there but a life remembering somebody's story um, and by the way I I'll show you guys this real quick. I drew, I never launched, I never launched it. Um, but I drew a whole series um, of things about this. This is kind of how I was thinking through my, my family life. There's me down there. Um, and I drew this whole series about being in a dysfunctional family or from a dysfunctional family. So this was Cassie over here, um, Scott and uh, Kelly, Sean, 
my older half brothers and sisters and there's me um and my dad and mom right it's very nice you know it looks so nice and uh, good right but then i also put like you know fire over that like because it didn't allow it just was, wasn't real you know and i never put this out because i just felt like i was gonna hurt maybe mostly my sister's feelings my sisters but my they're all gone now like they're all gone and well my older brother sean is still alive but he's that's a whole other story but there's these stories that i have that i um leave behind you know so i still go to this bar where my mom and dad met right so it's this you know jack hams on the wall so i did these things for myself really um, and i was going to launch a um uh, a YouTube channel about these stories with just like totally nameless. Like I didn't want to put my name on it. I was like, if someone finds it, and that's fine. You know, like my mom was like a, a, a witch <laughs> who was like trying to curse people and stuff. I just find like, I find these stories funny in a weird, in a dysfunctional, very dysfunctional way. Um, especially like, I don't know. That's how I um, kind of was dealing with these feelings as an adult. I was kind of just writing them out as almost like a children's picture book. If that makes sense. Um, and it's really been on my mind the past couple of days because I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't have any stories to, to leave behind to like my kids or my kids kids if they have kids probably not but i don't know um, but uh or what's it even worth like it's not even about like leaving my stories behind or anything like that i think it's just like showing the world like hey man families are complicated and people are humans are complicated and there's weird stuff out there and it's kind of entertaining too in a weird way but it also makes you feel better about like something that you might be like oh man ashamed of or you know, I never used to like to tell my friends when I was a kid that my, you know, that, that wasn't my real mom or like my stepmom wasn't my real mom. Um, and kids were mean, you know, kids were mean in the eighties and nineties. They're still mean. So they would say, you know, definitely talk to them. Um, didn't really bother me, but so I go to, when I think of my sister, I think of heavy metal. She always had cool posters and things like that. And um, uh, and for me, when I think of heavy metal, well, that always just leads me back to Iron Maiden. I think like Iron Maiden is my constant in life. I tell that story about how when I was, I don't know, you know, eight years old or whatever, like fourth or fifth grade, fifth grade, early fifth grade, summer before fifth grade, I learned to draw. Uh, Eddie from Iron Maiden. <laughs> and I loved it. I didn't know what I was drawing. There was an Aces High. Some some high school kid left his Aces High cover or, or vinyl on the... No, it wasn't a vinyl. It was a, like a cassette tape or something. It was a cassette tape. It folded out. You could see the whole art, I think. And um, he left it at the bus stop. And I looked at it and I was just like, I didn't take it. I just looked at it and I was like, whoa, wow. And then I saw it again somewhere. There was a poster of it somewhere. And I just, I just started drawing um, Eddie from Iron Maiden, <laughs> not even knowing what it was. There was like stuff on MTV at the time or something. With, I was just mesmerized by it. And I um, can't really say why. It just looked cool to me. Yeah. And so that's why. And that got me in all kinds of trouble at school. You know, like that's part of my story too is like, I'd be like, it's time to draw kids. And I'd be like, check this out. It's my character called Really Dead. And they're like, whoa, what's wrong with this kid? This kid's got some issues. And I'm like, no, it just looks cool, guys. <laughs> I'm so like innocent. And um, they're like, he must have deep dark problems and I 
promise you I didn't. I was just honestly, I still think back to those those days and I'm like, no, nah, I was just like I was like, this is just cool. Why is this? I don't know why that's doing that. Hmm. Pro pencil, pro anchor. Feels, this brush feels a little different today. Feels a little washed out. Oh, wait. There we go. I had the little. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, so basically just doing what I do, you know, this is um, drawing every day on good days and on bad days. And today I got a, you know, I, I'm next of kin, I, I, I guess my older brother's not around. Um, and I got to call the funeral home and sign some papers and figure out what to do you know, with that situation today. So that's how I'm going to spend some of my day <laughs> today. And um, think about my brother, my older brother, Scott, who passed away many years ago now, but he had a very tumultu tumultuous relationship with my mom. She used to beat him with like a telephone cord and stuff, I heard. And um, he ran away to the military, became a G-man. Do Apache helicopters, and um, but he somehow made amends with her over the years, and would speak to her. And it was mostly because of his wife. She, his wife was from South Korea, Judy. And they didn't believe in having this this, this functionality in the family. So Judy forced Scott to uh, make amends with his mom, and he did. And when she passed away, you know, my brother paid for the funeral and all that stuff and I thought that was just so admirable like it was such a lesson to, to to me as a young adult raising my kids and was like somebody could do you so wrong and that you could still forgive them you know kind of, uh, just be a good person you know it's kind of it's kind of what's up so probably the greatest lesson I learned from my big bro you know even being distant we were really trying to um, get together before he passed away and then he got cancer and he just didn't tell anybody he's like didn't want anybody to worry didn't want anyone to see him like that um, and that's just how it goes I know I'm, this is pretty bummer you know I don't want to be a bummer I feel like other artists think that too you might think like, I don't want to talk about this to anybody or whatever. And you don't have to, but I'm going to tell you, like, sit with yourself and um, draw it out. I think like guy said, journaling in art form, super healthy for you. It doesn't have to be public just for you. That's right. Um, don't keep it inside yourself. You know, you gotta, you gotta definitely pull it out and, um, draw it out that's why it's called drawing you know someone told me that once um, that drawing was magic you know we call it drawing because we're drawing these things out of our imagination we're pulling them and you know, we're pulling them out um, of there if you keep it inside well then you know you uh it's not good Oh, that was that was kind of cool actually with the bigger eye happy happy accident there I think maybe um so yeah I'm going through it right now but it's it's fine um I'm feeling better it was it was a heavy Sunday you know recording that thing about Ed that was super tough and um I've been getting a lot of messages from people about that there's a lot of people that are grieving um, that were fans of Ed and the channel, or maybe not fans of Ed, but fans of the Kayfabe, uh, cartoonist Kayfabe channel. And um, um, they don't really have an outlet to um, grieve. 
or anything like that. So it's, it's um, I've been hearing a lot, I've been hearing from a lot of people about that. And um, also, I haven't said anything. It's just not my place to say, but I know people are worried about Jim, uh, Jim Rugg, and uh, Jim's my friend. I talked to him. He's fine. I mean, he's going through it too, but just. He's, he's in better shape than most people, I think. Like, he's got you know, a good a good way, a good head to think about things. And he's doing okay. He's not going to hurt himself or anything like that, I think. I don't know. I just want people to know that. I worry. I told him, I was like, dude, I worry. He, he messaged me, actually. Uh, Jim. Um, he uh, texted me about my sister and said, I'm really sorry, man. And uh, I was like, well, dude, I've been worried about you all week because he lost a brother, you know, and, uh, and he was more concerned about me. So, so Jim's one of the best human beings <laughs> that I know. So he's, he's okay. He'll be all right. I hope he's able to, um, continue um, in some way publicly like doing something I hope he can you know, I don't know how you do it but I hope he can kind of keep something alive there that spirit of um, cartoonist kayfabe because man that was so cool seeing so many messages now of people saying that like they made an impact and made them think about comic books and I've got a lot of new people here on this channel that I know I've subscribed probably a hundred people subscribe on Sunday. So I don't know. Hopefully they're just artists and you know, they need an outlet. And I did hear from a few of them. So welcome to the draw or die club. <laughs> and, um, this is what we do. So, um, I don't want it to be a bummer. You know, I don't want things to be a bummer in this club. Um, usually I'm not dealing with stuff. I'm talking to artists privately about these things. And we're just trying to stay encouraging to artists that are out there struggling or just even if you're not struggling and you're like feeling like a positive force of art like we just want to encourage you to keep drawing and um uh, keep you motivated and now i really i don't know how i'm gonna do it but i want to make more cartoonists you know and really just think about that I don't know what that looks like for me. It's not like a how to draw thing. It's more like a, how do we inspire people to make comics and more cartoon, you know, more, more cartooning. I've been thinking about that too. And I'm going a little bit longer than my, than my normal half hour here, but, um, just talking through some of the things I'm thinking about for this week's newsletter too. It's just like, what does it mean to be a cartoonist versus an artist versus a, you know, whatever. And for me, you know, I'm thinking about the definition there. I think a cartoonist is a storyteller really, um, that you can, and you can draw the things from your mind. You don't necessarily have to have reference you can draw them at different angles. So very burn Hogarth, um, learning to draw forms from your mind and learning to see something and, and interpret it really fast. So I think speed is another thing about cartoonists compared to artists, um, you know, or like fine illustrators or something like that. Nothing wrong with any of that. Like I almost feel like in a way, um, um, tattoo artists or cartoonists because they have to tell a story quickly sometimes with just <laughs> minimal lines um so they kind of fall into this weird gray area I'm trying to define like oh i was looking at looking around at the definition and i didn't really i didn't really see anything that was really defined but i kind of feel like i always felt weird about that word i'm not a cartoonist i'm a comic book artist or cartoonist just sounded like like a little kid so even whenever, you know, Ed and Jim and whatever would call themselves cartoonists, I was like, oh man, that, don't diminish, you know, like you guys are amazing artists. But then I realized like, well, wait a minute, it is, 
you know, the more I thought about it and, and tried to define what it meant to be a cartoonist, it was more than like I'm Garfield or, you know, goofy little drawings or something like that. It was how you approach telling, expressing a story or a feeling quickly in a few lines. And it's not perfect. Cartooning doesn't have to be perfect. You can bend the rules. You know, that's cool. Like being a cartoonist, cartoonist is cool. You're not like a fine artist might look at this and be like, well, listen, the neck of the guitar is blah, 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 blah. The proportion is off here. A cartoonist is kind of like punk rock, you know, like you're kind of like, I only know three chords and I'm just going to scream into this microphone and whatever lyrics pop out of the ether, I'm going to just put them down, you know, like that's, that's always what cartooning felt like to me. Not like, wackadoo, let's draw an elephant. Like <laughs> it was more like expressive, you know, in a way, which is why I think I would always be angry at like the finer artists or people that treated art or cartooning like it wasn't like the real art or something. I really hated that. <laughs> I still kind of, still kind of hate that. People, oh, you're a cartoonist. Oh, okay. That's cute. I hate that. If you're like that, just unsubscribe right now. Please go away. <laughs> I mean, this guitar is not any guitar that's ever existed. It's just from my mind, you know, like, and I also kind of feel like as I'm thinking about that, it just kind of keeps you. I like to build up like that memory bank of things that I can draw on command. So if I was forced to like, not forced, but, you know, just for funsies, if someone was like, I need to draw a heavy metal guy, I would do exactly this process I just showed you. I might glance at something real quick just to be like, okay, that's the vibe. Like, just capture the vibe and put it down. Like, that's cartooning to me. So, I don't really feel like there's a... I looked, I looked for content about what does it mean to be a cartoonist? It doesn't have to be that... You know, you're a fairgrounds caricature artist or something like that. That's nothing wrong with that. I can go do that too. But deep down, the, the, the act of being making more cartoonists, I want people to know that it's cool as shit to be a cartoonist. You know? Then, how about that? How about that's the that's the slogan? Um, hey kids, it's cool as shit to be a cartoonist. Let's freaking go. Hey everybody, here's how you draw Iron Eddie from Iron Maiden. Rocking out. He's going to have no shirt on him right here, so he's got some like, you know, he's, you know, he's worse for wear down underneath there. So it's fun. You got to just keep it. It's fun, you know? Drawing is fun, and uh, and cartooning is so approachable too. Like when I tell you that you don't have to be this perfect, you know, you don't have to be perfect. You need perfection at the door with cartooning, and that's, anyways, that's how I draw through grief. <laughs> so. a mixed bag of thinking this one's for my sister who uh she was so calm and cool and um and you can't have regrets in, in life either you can't be like i wish i would have done this i wish i would have done that I wish i would have been better because it's all a lie you know to make yourself feel like it's your fault or like make it about you somehow or or bl place blame somewhere else or I think you just gotta go back. This is how it is. This is how it went. This is how the story went. Um, and uh, and that's okay. And you can you can say like, you know what? What stories in your future do you not want to go that way? 
So like, are there people in your life that you would think like, I don't want that to happen to this person. I want to reach out to them today and say, Hey, are you okay? I noticed you're a little, you know, like, or I don't know. I don't know what, the, what you would say. The last few times I saw my sister, I thought she was, you know, she looked real skinny and pale and, but what am I going to say? Like, are you on heroin? Are you dealing with cancer? Like, I don't know how to approach it. I just didn't, I just was like, I'm not going to bother her. She's not going to tell me I'm, to find out that she was struggling. That sucks. You know, I do have a little bit of feeling of like, man, I wish I would have asked, but I just didn't want to, you know, it's, and I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. You know, but I didn't know. You find out these things only later. And it's, it's, it sucks, but that's just life. So you got to keep rocking out. Okay, guys, that's 46 minutes stream. <laughs> um, appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate you watching the streams. I'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. or maybe like a, a more, uh, uh, happy uh <laughs> happier topic than drawing through grief and death and heavy metal and it's been a heavy week i'll just keep rocking out we'll see you uh, 